tonight. It's really great to see you all here. I think this is more parents than we've ever had come to one of these things, so that's awesome. Thank you uh, for turning out. Uh, but it's great to see you all here celebrating the achievements of all these wonderful athletes. This year has been, without a doubt, my favorite season coaching cross country. This is my sixth cross country season now. Um, and without question, this has been my favorite one. Um, we began uh, pretty obviously with an unprecedented number of incoming runners. I've never had 10 freshmen on the team before, so that was a really good start. Uh, we also had a group of really fantastic, well-experienced, talented returners, um, and that, that was pivotal in you know, helping everybody progress and moving forward. Significantly, our program numbers rose for the first time in my career here at CHS. We've been on a slight downward trend and we started kicking back up this year, so that was really great. Uh, we had the voluntary contributions of not one, but two fantastic managers who helped out at our meets uh, and at practice every now and then, especially at our home meets. Our home meets would not have happened without our managers. Uh, we had three dedicated, kind, and supportive captains, and we had both Eli, who couldn't make it tonight due to work, and Chris come out uh, to help coach the team this year. So, contributions of all parties were invaluable to the progress of the team this season. While we didn't necessarily accomplish all of our dreams in the late season, we were certainly still successful. We were not unsuccessful by any means. Uh, we showed up with a sixth place finish at States when in every ranking we weren't even mentioned. So the fact that we showed up and got sixth was really significant. Uh, not only that, but the following week when we went to meet of champions in the heat on a very difficult day, we moved up over Bishop Girton and Exeter, both of whom had bested us at States. So we were still continuing our progress at that point. Uh, in addition to these successes, we had two major wins, one at home for senior night and one at the Cap Area Invite where we swept boys varsity, girls varsity, girls JV, and boys JV for one of the most dominant performances of any CHS team over the last few. While we've had many performances and results to be proud of, what I'm most proud of with this team is the steps we made in our team culture. This could be attributed to a wide variety of things, but ultimately this team made a major leap in that we all came to the common understanding that beyond any performance, beyond any challenge or any expectation, there's nothing more important in this sport than the team, the culture, and our own character. Time and time and time again this season, I saw athletes verbally encouraging each other during races when it's not easy to talk. I saw athletes finishing races and immediately congratulating not only their own teammates, but their, uh, their opposition as well, with fist bumps, hats on the back, and words of encouragement. When any athlete had a bad day, their response was always genuine and supportive, never anybody picking on each other, never any judgment. Because at the end of the day, we all understand that sports are, above all else, an opportunity to grow, learn, and to become better people, both within our sport and beyond our sport and our outside lives. That is true greatness, and that's what's most important. So I'm incredibly impressed and proud of how this team uh, has taken great steps toward that. Um, this team makes me incredibly proud, and thank you all for such a wonderful season. I keep coming back because of my and all of you and, uh, and what each of you contribute every day. We're at a major high right now, and I know we're continuing to rise, so I can't wait to see how far we go. So thank you. I will turn it over to Chris. If Chris has any words to say, no pressure. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to thank Coach Pete for having me come help out. I ran cross country here 30 years ago, probably somewhere around then. And I've coached high school track for over 25 years, but I never had the opportunity to coach cross country. Um, so when he asked if I would come help and volunteer, I, I kind of jumped at it because it's a sport that I love. And like he was saying, the kids are great. Um, great group of kids, not to tribute to the parents and everything like that. So uh, thank you for raising good kids. Yeah. And the future's bright. They're good. Yeah. It's a good program coming, so yeah, thanks for letting me help out with that. So, thank you. Thank you. And Chris didn't mention it, but he somehow, this was his first cross country season coaching, even though he won New England individually his senior year. I don't know how you fall off cross country after that. I just went to track. <laughs> uh, so, hopefully, Chris will keep coming around for a long, long time. Um, we have lots of recognition and awards to go around. <laughs> I have seven more sections to my speech. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're gonna jump in, don't worry, the rest of these are shorter. Um, I'm gonna start with JV letters. So um, any cross country program can be good for any individual year. So 
So let's clap again for JD. <laughs> so now I have a shout out for our captains. This season, as I said, we had three wonderful, fantastic captains. In the past, I've chosen captains based on performance and leadership <coughs> potential, but this year I flipped the script and I had them apply to the position and justify why they wanted to be leaders, what potential they saw in themselves, and what unique things they felt they could bring to the team. From the beginning, it was clear that all three of these individuals sincerely wanted to be leaders. What surprised me was their ability to be introspective and to really reflect on the role that they have in the team and how they can translate that to leadership. Each of these individuals brought something entirely unique to the role. They were all fantastic to cooperate with, and it was clear that the team was a top priority for each of them. They were also incredibly fast every time I had to message them about anything. Like, I teach period seven. No, I don't teach period seven. There would be times where I would have some student crisis to deal with at the end of the day. I'm crying, oh, I forgot my work, or this is going on in my life, now I have to sit and talk to them about it, or check in with another teacher, or clean up my room afterwards. And I would just send a message to them, hey, can you guys get, can you guys get warm up started? And I swear to God, they were sending responses saying, yeah, we've got it before I even sent my message. So good on them for that. Um, I'd like to give each of them their own brief recognition. So let's start by giving it up for Wesley. He's our mindset man. He's an encyclopedia of competition, and he's always ready to talk race strategy or give a solid pep talk before a race. So good on you, Wes. Next, let's give it up for Liam Gleason. I don't know if any of you know Aiden, but Aiden is a wonderful, wonderful guy, um, and really an inspiring guy. Um, Liam worked incredibly hard every day, and he's a true testament to the results of time and dedication to the sport. And finally, let's give it up for Sean. Sean <laughs> collective role model. He loves the sport, he loves the team, and he somehow has like a force field that blocks out all the stress pre-race. I swear to God, he went through this whole season, his heart rate didn't get over 60. Um, so let's give it up one more time for our captain. Alright, varsity. So, the job of the varsity runners in any team isn't just to put up fast times and score points at meets. It's also to build a culture of hard work and excellence throughout the team, not just in their own group. So, these are the performers that everyone else looks up to and compares themselves against. The pressure can be immense. But I was watching an interview the other day with Caitlin Tui and Parker Valley, who just went one and two uh, at uh, NCAA, uh, you know, college level cross countries uh, nationals. And uh, Caitlin Tui said, "The pressure is a privilege," and I think the varsity group really steps up to that. They feel that and they embrace it. <coughs> They've proven this year that they win with dignity and humility, and they lose with dignity and humility when that does happen. The leadership of this group will leave a mark that lasts a long time, so please clap for each varsity runner as they come up and receive their letters or pins or whatever other regalia we have for them. This varsity group includes any runner who raced varsity this season, as well as any four-year JV members of the team. So if you are a senior who raced JV for four years, you also get a varsity letter. So first up, we've got Josiah. Thousand mile summer for doing that. Very impressive and nearly getting it right. Next, we've got Liam White. <laughs> Liam was signed up for football until like two weeks before the season and then made the change, and we are so glad to be here. Next, we've got Aldo. You did soccer freshman year? Football. You did football freshman year? Yeah. Oh, Aldo did football freshman year. <laughs> jumped over to, uh, to cross country this year. And it was great, because without him, our only sophomore would have been Ian. And Ian would have been so alone. But he and Ian had two teams in the pod, so it was really great. Next, we've got Quinn. Congratulations, Quinn. Quinn's first couple seasons were a little rough. A couple injuries. Bumps to manager status a couple times, 
you know, for stress fractures and whatnot. But, I mean, he really worked his way down. He got under 21 minutes in a 5K this season. That was that was incredible for you know somebody who's primarily a sprinter. So great work. Next we've got Matt Hooper. <coughs> without the sleeves and I don't know if it was a colored pencil or a marker or a crayon but he drew a big C on it. I wouldn't like it. <laughs> All right, next we've got Jacob Gardner. <laughs> Jacob's going off to the military next year. <laughs> so Jacob was doing Civil Air Patrol and cross country, and he was taking a couple college classes this year over at the Tech, so he was like with us some days and not with us other days, and by the end of the season, I could tell it was really wearing on him, but he stuck it out the whole way through, so that was awesome. Next we've got Tucker. <laughs> Tucker, during his junior year, was with us for a month, and then moved to DC to be a Senate page, and then still decided to come back and do cross country even after something like that. Thanks for that. Uh, next, we have Simon. No problem, congratulations. Simon's been a four year member of the team and um, he was a little guy when he started as a freshman. And I remember my wife came to the first meet. I haven't told Simon this, but my wife came to the first meet. My wife teaches middle school. And she was like, oh my gosh, look at Simon. He's such a cute little guy. And she still calls him Little Simon when we talk about cross <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we have next, Wes. Come on, Wes. <laughs> Wes already has a letter, so he's getting a captain pin and a bar today. Great job, Wesley. Wesley is like Mr. PRs. Uh, his junior year in particular, he had two, in one season, two separate one minute PRs, which is like, and they were not on, they were not in fair weather and not on good courses for him. Um, next we've got Liam Gleason. Liam joined his sophomore year, I believe, and uh, I remember we were at States that year. We won States that year, and Liam was our alternate, and it was really, really cold, snowy. That day was crazy. It started below freezing, snow on the ground, and by the time it was afternoon racing, uh, the ground had thawed, all the snow had melted, and everything was mud, so we actually got the best weather of the whole thing. But Liam and I were standing there on the side of the road, freezing watching Forrest McKenzie, who used to be a Cocker runner. Uh, we were watching him on our phones, uh, you know, commenting on the whole race, so that was a good time. And last we've got Sean. His freshman year, he was one of the only freshmen who came to summer running that year. Uh, there were a few that came around, but Sean was there almost every time. He worked super hard, he got a lot bigger, he got a lot stronger, he got a lot faster. Last year we got him to do indoor, but it was the dome season. He didn't love it. And then he tri almost, almost switched back to football this or no, basketball this winter. But he didn't. He kept it. <laughs> Individual awards. So there are three individual awards: there's a Rookie of the Year award, an MVP award, and a Coach's award. And the Rookie of the Year award. This is an award that you know I kind of go back and forth on giving. Uh, like I said, I've been coaching for six years. I think I've given this award probably two or three times. Uh, some years it feels fully warranted, and then some years uh, it seems almost like patronizing to give out a Rookie of the Year award. 
So I, this is a year where it feels fully warranted. Don't, don't doubt me on that. Uh, this runner came to Rutlet as an eighth grader and was immediately almost all anybody could talk about in Division I at the middle school level and at the high school level. And all these other coaches were saying, it was, I think it was during the cross country season at our first meet when the coach said, hey, so you've got, you've got this, this guy coming up next year. And I was like, who is he? So I had to do some research and figure out who he was. Um, and actually, the first time I met his father it was in the parking lot at Memorial. His father, for some reason, was literally dressed like a clown. Wig, red nose, everything. Um, <laughs> so, uh, he was pretty much all anybody could talk about, whether it was middle school or high school. Not only did he arrive with the love of running, but he came with an unbelievable natural talent. This season he came up to Division I at the high school level, and, he, and despite high pressure and expectations, he proved he can hold his own. He may love his mileage a bit too much sometimes, uh, but this runner began to learn the importance of cross-training and lifting this season, and he's becoming a better runner for it. His ceiling is incredibly high, and I'm sure this is not gonna be the last award he wins for this sport. So let's give it up for Josiah. Our well deserved. All right, next is our MVP award. MVP and coaches award, I've always. So. Our MVP award is an award I give every year, usually to a runner who stepped up at a pivotal time for the team, or a runner who helped bring out the best in their peers. This year it goes to a runner who I believe found the best in themselves, or in themselves, and discovered a new lens through which to view the sport of running. This runner was always up at the top of the crowd in our races, not just this year, but in the past as well. He was often battling for a first place spot in our lineup this year. He worked incredibly hard every day, and though he had some low points to his season, he took each one as an opportunity to learn and grow. This runner found new peace and joy in the sport this season, and he was an integral part of our team's successes, as well as the team's attitude following shortcomings. This individual was always supportive of his teammates, and he provided helpful advice and guidance in practice. For all of these reasons and more, this year's MVP award goes to Liam Gleason. Coaches Award. The Coaches Award is another award that I've given every year that I've been coaching. This award generally goes to a student who best exemplifies the dedication, sportsmanship, and respect that our team culture is built upon. This year, the award goes to a new member of the team. This athlete came out uh, regularly throughout the summer to participate in summer running. He worked hard every day and was a necessary part of the social structure of our team. He's deeply reflective about his training and performance and he achieved some excellent results this year. When the JV season ended at Cap Area, a couple minutes after he'd finished his race, I approached him and asked him if he would keep on with the Varsity 7 as an alternate during the championship season. He said yes without hesitation, despite the fact that he'd gone through a very long season and he was feeling some aches and soreness. This runner came to practice every day and integrated seamlessly with the runners he had not, uh, who he had not been training with throughout the season. He took on his job flawlessly. Um, had the weather been right at Meet of Champions, he probably would have even had a race at, at New England. So this year's Coaches Award goes to Elliot Clendon. <laughs> and the reason that we're doing this in December, right before Christmas, is because that award, they only put one end in his name. <laughs> All right, um, senior gifts. We're almost there, people. Two more horses. Senior gifts. Uh, this season, we have a great group of seniors. All totaled, the eight of them have collectively just over 30 seasons of cross country, uh, specifically CHS cross country. So there are four seasons each for Wesley, Simon, Jacob, Sean, Quinn, and Matt. Three for Liam and three in one month for Tucker. Uh, <laughs> it's the center page thing. That's a lot of experience and a lot of impact. To thank these athletes for their contributions to the team, we have senior gifts for each of them. I'm gonna call them all up to receive their gifts. So let's give it up for our seniors. All <laughs> Stay up here so you guys can do a picture. Simon, <coughs> Tucker, Matt, J. 
Jacob, Sean, Wesley, and there you go. If any senior parents want a picture of the seniors, they will pose on the stairs for their picture. Go <laughs> together and pretend you like each other. Booster Club does a lot for our team, managing our finances. Every time I send over a receipt that's like six months too late, they get me my payback really quickly, so thank you for that. Um, and, and we're looking to try some new, uh, some new fundraisers for next year. We are looking for parents that are willing to help with our Booster Club. Uh, the current president of the Booster Club, Mary Ann. Um, next year is Mary Ann's last year. So she'll be stepping down at the end of next year. We kind of need someone who may be interested in stepping into that role to learn a little bit from her this year. I also want to give a shout out to Tim and Jess Thompson for helping out with the Booster Club every year. Uh, this is their last year, so thank you to them. And um, we are looking for several parents, like I said, who are interested in being involved and to support your child and your team. So if you are interested, reach out to me or to Mary Henson. She's right here. Um, and thank you all so much for coming tonight. I really look forward to next season. Thank you. Uh, so we reorganized the coaches' gifts. Um, yeah, I mean, I felt like we should have. I mean, we've been all of the time. We said that we're almost like a person experienced around the physical responding. We've almost all of us been for your athletes. Um, so we, we took put the old sing list, and I think we all signed our names on it. Um, there's a frame on the way. Yeah, we, oh, we, we collected some money for a frame, um, and we were thinking that this could be like a tradition. Some of the seniors next year could come and sign this and just keep adding names to it. Yeah, that'd Just be so great. you can remember some of the athletes. Awesome. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. that I've been able to keep from cross country for all my time here at Cochrane, so this is going up there with it. <laughs> Thank you guys. Did they ever send through a placement?